Lave is a brand coming out of Singapore that has made quite an entrance to the audio market recently, launching with a number of interesting products one after the other, including a discrete headphone amplifier, a digital to digital converter, and an R2R DAC, the Lave Harmony, which we'll be taking a look at today. I'm Golden Sounds, and you're watching The Headphone Show by Headphones.com. If you like what we do here and you want to help support it, consider Headphones.com for your next audio purchase. And buy with confidence thanks to Headphones.com's 365-day return policy. Before we begin, I need to say for the purposes of transparency that I've done some consulting work for Lave. I've had some input on the design of both the Harmony DAC and the HP2A amplifier, so I don't get anything if you buy one of these, my work with them is concluded, but I still feel that it's important to tell you about that so that you know that I was somewhat involved in the development of these products. The most striking thing about the Harmony is the build. Coming in at $2,700, this is definitely targeting a higher end market, though still lower than many flagship offerings from the likes of Cord, Denifrips, Rockner, and many others, but the build of this device at this price point truly does stand out amongst the competition. Offering a chassis milled from a single block of aluminium with an excellent matte black or silver finish and gold trimming for the controls, this unit is solid and I would say quite comfortably beats the build quality offered by many of its competitors from Denifrips, Hollow, and Topping, for instance. It really is a gorgeous device to look at and exactly what you would want or expect from a device of this price. The one aspect of the build quality that I'm not so keen on is the metal spiked feet. Now some people really like spikes on their audio products and that's going to be a benefit for them. For me personally, my preference is just I don't like spikes that much. I find that it's a lot more likely that you're going to scratch whatever desk, rack or other audio product you're trying to stack this on top of and that's a little bit of a problem, especially since the cups, whilst they are very nice, have rubber on the bottom, making it quite difficult to move the product without nudging it off the cups and immediately scratching whatever it's on top of, especially since this only has three feet, so it's a lot more likely to tip when you're moving it about. Although this does have a little bit of an interesting solution to the challenge of perfectly aligning the cups without having to hold it up with one hand and move the cup with the other hand, which is that it comes with a card. You place this card on the desk or wherever you're wanting to put the product, you align the cups in the notches in that card, and then you can just put this straight on top of it. If you opt to purchase the accompanying headphone amplifier, the HP2A, both the Harmony and the HP2A actually have small divots on the top of the chassis so that you can stack one on top of the other without needing to do any alignment beforehand as well, so that's quite a nice touch. The display is big, extremely easy to read, and overall looks excellent, making it very easy to change inputs and settings. And the included remote is equally excellent for build quality. I didn't find much need to use the remote since the Harmony doesn't have any inbuilt volume control, but still, if you are willing to swap inputs without having to get up and touch the DAC if you've got it in a speaker system for example. Still nice to have a remote and the remote itself is built beautifully. Looking inside we can see a large transformer for the linear power supply with some additional Moo Metal shielding around it which seems to work quite well given as at the output the mains leakage pickup is pushed down to below minus 130 dB. By the way, if you'd like to see full measurements of the Harmony DAC, they are available at the Audiophiles section of headphones.com linked in the description, or click the card at the top. The USB connection is also galvanically isolated, which means you shouldn't need to worry about the quality of the USB source that you are using to feed this DAC. You can connect it just directly to a beefy desktop PC, and that should block any noise that could get through from the source device and potentially degrade the performance of the DAC. And then over here, we see the actual R2R digital to analog conversion modules themselves. The important thing to note here though, is that this DAC doesn't actually have a dedicated output stage or buffer, which does mean that this has quite a high output impedance, 1200 ohms on XLR. In most scenarios, this is no problem at all. If your amplifier has a 50,000 ohm input impedance, for example, which is pretty typical, you don't need to worry about it whatsoever. But if you're wanting to use either a passive preamplifier or an amplifier which has an unusually low input impedance, some of the ones from Topping and SMSL in particular can have something like 2000 ohms only of input impedance. In those situations, you may encounter some slight issues and you probably don't want to use long high capacitance cables as you may actually end up with treble roll off. So the pairing of amp that you want to use with this DAC is something that you should keep in mind. Just check what the input impedance of that amplifier is and make sure that it's sufficiently high. But how does the Harmony DAC sound? Well, in a word, comfortable. This DAC leans slightly warmer than neutral in a way which for headphone listening in particular, I often find works quite well. Taking the edge off sharper recordings and reducing listening fatigue. If you opt to use the NOS or non-oversampling mode, that's even more true, though that's just because non-oversampling causes a roughly three decibel drop by 20 kilohertz. So you have actually just attenuated the treble a fair bit. But that's nothing to do with the DAC hardware itself. That is just how non-oversampling works on any R2R DAC. 
Swap it to the oversampling mode though, and it'll upsample everything to 705.6 or 768 kHz, and you get a much flatter response, rolling off just a touch before 20 kHz, but only just a touch. There are some stereotypes about R2R DACs, and I think that a lot of those do actually apply to the Harmony, but kind of in the best possible way. This is a slightly warmer sounding DAC. It does give you a little bit more weight and body to the presentation than I would say most Delta Sigma DACs, and a lot of that could just be down to its distortion profile. It's got a THD plus N of about minus 92 dB, and the overall profile is quite even in terms of distortion products, almost the same level of both even and odd order harmonics that also extend out quite far. Um, then there is a little bit of change in profile and level versus the actual output level from the DAC as well. Listening to a track like Barley Run by 4Play, for example, there is a little bit of added density to the sound versus something like an SMSL Raw Pro DAC. It's portrayed in more of a weighty fashion with more of a focus on the trailing body of notes than the leading edges themselves so much. But one of the other big stereotypes about R2R DACs is that they have a better soundstage or spatial presentation than many Delta Sigma DACs, and whilst I don't feel that that's always true, in this instance, I would definitely agree. Whilst there's a little bit less very upper treble air to the sound, there's a more convincing frontal depth and placement within the soundstage on the harmony that on both speakers and headphones I really, really enjoyed. There is something about the layering on R2R DACs that is a positive stereotype which in my experience broadly does seem true. It's not that the harmony is staging bigger than other DACs, it's just that how convincing the placement within the soundstage that it does have is better. Tamba is another aspect which the Harmony DAC portrays in a beautifully engaging way. Not one that I would necessarily say is the most accurate per se, but one that I think is for many people and in many setups going to potentially be preferable to a more transparent sound signature. And likely what a lot of people are actually looking for if they are explicitly seeking out an R2R DAC. It's a little bit more mid-range forward, and through a combination of both the presentation of the timbre itself and, again, that convincing stage placement, it sort of focuses your attention more on the aspects that make up the character of a vocal or instrument, more so than the fine-grained nitty-gritty detail itself. The best analogy I can give is that if the SMSL Raw Pro DAC was a Pyferman HE1000 unveiled, the Lave Harmony is a ZMF Atrium. And that analogy I think remains true for detail retrieval itself as well as timbre. Whilst this is a pretty technically capable DAC, and I don't have any complaints about the level of information that this DAC is able to extract, if you do a direct AB comparison versus the SMSL Raw Pro DAC or something more similarly priced like a Ferrum Wandler, it does fall behind just a touch. This is I think more a case of just being a different presentation though rather than one being outright better or worse. The Wandler is more detailed than the Harmony, and the faster, more incisive elements of percussion-heavy or electronic music are handled better. And whilst the same does go for the Raw Pro DAC, that unit makes a more significant sacrifice in the overall tone of presentation. Coming off thinner sounding, which when comparing to the Harmony, I definitely found less enjoyable. So whilst the Raw Pro DAC did have a little bit of an edge in technical performance itself, the overall sound and the trade-offs that it was making in terms of its overall presentation I didn't feel were worth it, and the Harmony was much more enjoyable to listen to overall. Versus the Wandler, it's much closer. The Wandler being more detailed and incisive, but still more full body than the Raw Pro was. But the Harmony was warmer again, whilst trading off a touch of immediacy and incisiveness. And the preferred option between these two pretty much just came down to either my mood or the specific track that I was listening to. This is a notable step up overall in terms of just how enjoyable it is to listen to versus quite a few lower price DACs in my opinion, potentially not in every single way. As I said, the SMSL Raw Pro DAC is a little bit more detailed, but quite a bit thinner sounding and overall much less enjoyable to listen to than the Harmony was. The Eversolo DAC Z8, that's my current favourite DAC under about $1000, and whilst again I think that that has the edge in certain particular areas, I definitely preferred listening to this overall. Comparing this to a few lower priced R2R DACs though, like Hyperman's EF 400 and EF 500, this was just a straight up upgrade in every single way. This comfortably beats the EF 400 and EF 500 in sheer detail retrieval. Staging on the Harmony DAC was also quite a bit bigger than on the EF 400 or EF 500, and I think that's significantly due to the outright clearer and better sounding treble on the Harmony DAC. The EF 400 and EF 500 are also, to my ear, warmer to the extent that I would call them coloured. That's not to say that they're bad, they're still very enjoyable sounding DACs, and also a really nice contrast to a lot of the AKM and ESS based options that you'll find at those prices, but nonetheless, the Harmony, if you're wanting this slightly warmer sound signature, was an overall upgrade in basically every single aspect. It wasn't really a preference based trade off. The DACs that I'd probably compare the Harmony to most closely are those from Denifrips. This has a lot of similarities with the Denifrips Pontus 2. I would say that this, to be honest, sounds like 
Denifrips done right, if that makes sense. This shares a lot of similarities with the Pontus II, but is slightly more resolving and slightly better in terms of just overall realism. It shares a lot of the same core character whilst improving on a few aspects, and there's not really anything I can think of that this does worse. When listening to the harmony, I found myself gravitating more towards heavily acoustic genres, stuff where the timbre of vocals and instruments was not just the focus of the track, but benefited from being pushed forward, even exaggerated a bit. Another case by Tora or Pizza Boy by Everything Everything are two examples of tracks that show how the harmony's slightly more vivid than real life presentation works great with certain genres, adding a little bit of extra weight to things, separating the perceived distance of elements more in the music, and providing an overall immersive result that just had me smiling. If you're more into genres that prioritize more technical or percussive aspects, anesthetized by Porcupine Tree, electronic music, or actually some classical and orchestral recordings that benefit from the unrestricted airiness of the upper treble and ultra clean renditions of high frequency strings, for example, then the improved clarity of a Wandler may be more ideal. I would not go as far as to say that this is a genre-specific or picky-sounding DAC, not at all. There was nothing that I played through this that sounded at all bad, and the differences that I'm describing here are very small differences. But this is just about when you're spending quite a lot of money, hyper-optimizing for the specific things that you're listening to. Alongside the Harmony DAC, Lave also sells the UDDC, a digital-to-digital -digital converter that's a little bit different from other DDCs in that it only has I2S output. But not just USB input but AES, SPDIF, and I2S inputs, something which is pretty rare. Most DDCs just have USB input. So that means that as well as using this as a USB to I2S bridge, like most DDCs are used for, you can also use an SPDIF input into this to improve and clean up the signal from an SPDIF output on a TV or AV receiver, for instance. That's a pretty nice feature to have. Not many other DDCs that I can think of have these inputs. DDCs are typically bought to try and improve the clocking or jitter performance of the DAC that you are feeding with them, and historically that was more of a thing. In years past, a lot of DACs did not have good USB implementations and would measurably perform worse when you fed them with USB instead of a good SPDIF, AES, or I2S source. Nowadays, that's less of a thing. USB implementations in general have improved significantly. So is the UDDC worth getting with the Harmony? Well, I would say no. The UDDC is a fantastic DDC. The jitter was extraordinarily low, and it beat out a large number of other digital sources that I've measured. If you are wanting a DDC, the UDDC is a particularly good one, and whilst it's more compact than most other DDCs, it still has full galvanic isolation internally, so even from a noise isolation perspective, this could still be a notable upgrade for many other DACs not made by Lave that don't have galvanic isolation internally of their own. But with the Harmony, it's already got galvanic isolation on the USB input, so we don't need to add any, and in terms of clocking or jitter, well, I measured the jitter at the output of the DAC feeding it USB, and then again feeding it I2S from the UDDC, and it does perform better when you're just feeding it USB direct from a PC. So ironically, whilst the UDDC is a great digital source, it may be more of a benefit to other products than Lave's own. I want to be clear though that this is not because anything about the Harmony DAC or the UDDC has been done wrong, it's just that actually, nowadays, USB is typically the best option for connecting your DAC. It is much harder, even with a theoretically perfect clock source or DDC, to keep that clock signal pristine over an external connection. Whereas with USB, there is no clock signal. The DAC is in full control of timing using its own internal clock. And that also means that you can have that clock right next to the DAC itself or the controlling FPGA if you want, meaning that the clock signal can be kept much more intact. And is why in most modern products that I've tested, you do get slightly better jitter performance using USB instead of using SPDIF or I2S input, regardless of how good the source is. DDCs are great if you either need galvanic isolation from a noisy source and your DAC doesn't have it already, or if your particular DAC does perform better with I2S or SPDIF input instead of just using USB. But, as said, nowadays most DACs will perform their best just using USB, assuming the source isn't super noisy. And if your DAC has galvanic isolation built in already, like the Harmony does, you don't even need to worry about that. And so, just use USB, you don't need to spend any extra money. So, I would recommend just using the Harmony with its USB input, but if you are wanting a DDC for another DAC, 
the UDDC in comparison to other DDCs is a very well performing option. The Harmony is built absolutely beautifully. I'd go as far as to say it has possibly the best build quality of any DAC close to this price point that I've come across. The sound is beautiful and engaging, with a focus on the mid-range and textural elements more so than the leading edge incisiveness. But these slight alterations to the sound are subtle enough that it does work with everything I threw at it, avoiding the pitfalls of some other products, particularly in the R2R category, that go too far into being coloured and have quite drastic trade-offs. The Harmony did everything you would want or expect an R2R DAC to do well and the result is fantastic. I don't think that it'll be the perfect choice for everyone, simply because it's not going for a purely neutral sound signature, but that's also exactly why I think for some people it's going to be just what they're looking for. I've really enjoyed my time with the Harmony, and it gets a big thumbs up from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions about the Harmony, any other products that we talked about in this video, music, gear, or anything else at all, come and say hey on our Discord server or the Headphones.com forum, where I and other Wiggly Air enthusiasts will endeavor to help. Until next time, thanks for watching.